Welcome to today's live stream. I'm just going to be working on some face shell stuff because that's what I need to get done still. And so it's going to be a little bit um, before I can get to the moving lens stuff. But uh, this will be fun. I enjoy these because it's more of like um, sort of like a podcast. We just kind of sit around and talk and I answer questions and stuff. Um, there we go. So now I can see comments and stuff. So basically today I'm just going to be drilling holes, cutting holes with a Dremel, that sort of stuff on the face shells. I'm also going to be uh, doing a little bit of plasti dipping on this ASM-1 shell that's going to Laurent. So yeah, it's very exciting because I'm getting very close to getting finished with this stuff here. Well, not very close, but I'm, I'm picking up steam here. And then once that's all caught up, it's great because then I can really focus on the stream. There are a lot of improvements I'm going to make to the stream shortly um, to make it a lot more watchable. I've kind of been getting some comments that this format, this POV format, um, is a little hard to watch. <laughs> it's a little sickening for some people. Um, so I kind of want to find the best of both worlds as far as... Um, uh, as far as... Uh, streaming goes. So without further ado, um, I've got a new hole layout here. My old ho hole layout is designed for the ASM-2 shell. Basically it's a template that goes over and that's how I know where to drill my holes. But it doesn't fit very well on the ASM-1 so I I used uh, my new vinyl cutter I got a little while ago and cut a new uh, stencil here that will help me drill my holes. Oh, I've kind of been missing comments here. Hey guys! It's always fun to, to see you guys commenting and checking in and stuff. Yeah, uh, Homecoming comes out soon now. It's like under a month away. It's gonna be pretty exciting. I'm curious about it. it really seems sort of like a, an Iron Man movie in some ways. So these holes are smaller than the actual holes I'm drilling, but that's just to help find where the center is. Uh, kind of started in the middle there. Could probably start on the bottom layer. Hey, Matthias, thanks for tuning in. Thank all of you for tuning in. It's fun to do these live streams. It's less, less like a, a traditional tutorial video and more like a podcast, I think. Something you can kind of put on in the background. And maybe when I start talking about something that you're interested in, you can kind of pay more attention to it. Or ask questions as you have them. Hey, Gianni. Yeah, I really, really enjoy this format. <laughs> and Septic Sam, everyone. L, Langston and Ryan's dad, CAK Comedy, M Macer 3, Dan. <laughs> Who'd I miss? <laughs> sure, L, you're still on the board. From like two months ago, the only five stream I've done so far. I do want to do more of those. I just kind of always am concentrating on Spider-Man stuff, it seems. Oh, that's funny. So, yeah, I really, I really enjoy this YouTube live streaming. I mean, I guess it's the same as Twitch. YouTube doesn't really do anything that original with it. Uh, in the future, I've looked a lot. I mentioned this in another, another stream, but in the future, I might go ahead and start streaming on both Twitch and YouTube. There are ways you can do that. 
There are ways you can stream on a lot of different streaming sites at once without affecting your, your stream quality too much. Um, Maxter, to answer your question, I get, I get a lot, a lot of interest in people wanting to buy like shells and masks and stuff. And, uh, I get so like bogged down in orders really quickly. I'm still trying to figure out the best way to get a lot of stuff out there. And so I'm thinking pretty soon. Um, I always say that I, if you follow my streams, it's always like whatever I'm planning is always going to happen in the next two weeks, but it never <laughs> actually ends up happening or it happens much later but um, pretty soon I want to get uh, kits going I think that's even better than 3d printing because one one hesitation I'm having with um, offering the 3d print files is that it's kind of a fear I have with my, my prints as well is that when you offer the actual file itself there could just be someone who has an axe to grind or a vendetta or something that goes in and um, you know gets gets your stuff and then releases it for free so that it's just out there and you have no control over it. Um, and so that's kind of the worst case scenario and I just have to be careful to avoid that. So um, mainly my MCU shell, I'm, I'm gonna avoid possibly uh, doing the 3D print route because also you need a you need a vacuum formed ABS shell in order to do the moving lenses. It's kind of key for the structural integrity of the mask. Um, Um, well, that's another thing. Maxter, uh, Maxter just asked, um, how do I, how do I get it by the movie? Unfortunately, I, I know there are a lot of people out there that want this stuff by the movie, and that's just not, like, a realistic deadline for, for where the work for me is at right now. Um, that's less than a month away, and so for people to actually have a moving facial lens by then, Either I'd, I'd really need to get into the, the tutorial aspects soon, or I'd need to, I mean, it's just, it's basically just impossible, I think. Um, which is unfortunate because I know you guys, a lot of you guys are excited about the premiere and stuff. So if you're, you know, if you're needing stuff for the premiere, you're unfortunately going to have to find other ways. Either do it yourself. I've got a couple other streams where I go into how to make lenses with you know, two liter bottles, clear two liter bottles and mesh. Um, so there are certain things that you could do to make a quick, quick solution. Or you could do the homemade style suit. Um, anything like that would probably be a, uh, a solution to that time crunch. Um, well, if that's the case, Maxter, um, I don't, I don't have uh, the mask like just the mask itself, the f file, I don't have that available, but if you go look at my other streams, I go really in depth on how to make the mask pattern, even so much as to, you know, I, I show you in Photoshop the pattern. So you could probably go in there and um, kind of sneak the mask out of that. And then, uh, Then you just need to go from there. You need to make your own lenses and, and all of that, kind of following the same tutorials. But unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get that for you in time because I'm just still really behind on my own work or the, the list I already have, I should say. Uh, Evil B, that's cool. Um, 3D printing is amazing. 3D printing helped a lot. Well, not for this one, but for the uh, the MCU moving lenses. Um, not as much as you might think. I didn't like. I didn't print a bunch of moving parts and technology and stuff. The 3D printing was mainly just for the initial shape and some other components. Then everything else was pretty much put together the same way I did it. Uh, last year. Oops. And Acid asked, what's your favorite superhero, McLean? 
well, duh, <laughs> Spider-Man. And then I'd, I'd say Batman comes in at a close second. I like both of those guys a lot. Good characters, interesting characters. Loved Lego Batman, that movie was hilarious. Came out on my birthday too. Yeah, this is the TSTA Amazing Spider-Man 1 shell that I'm drilling holes in right now. So that's good. I just got all of the, um, the, the holes drilled there. So I'm going to remove this vinyl template that I put on there for that purpose. That worked really well. Yeah, it's really nice and neat and evenly spaced out. I like that a lot. And it's not too many. My other shell design, I think it has too many and they're too close together because sometimes it it kind of breaks the shell in between the holes when you, you're drilling it. So I think that's kind of a sign that it's too close together. Um, Dan just asked, I kind of jumped a bunch of questions. Uh, well, first, Maxter, I'll say that my favorite Spider-Man is probably the Ben Riley Spider-Man, just because that's, when I was a kid, that's kind of where the comics were at. So that's was always like my first favorite comic book series even though it was so late and it's after clones and all of the different things it's crazy but um that, that was my favorite back in the day i liked it a lot and uh yes acid i do like rick and morty very funny show Um, CAK just said that you have some uh, filament stuck in a place where it can't extrude or get pulled out. Um, yeah, I've had extruder problems like that before. It helps if you know how to take your extruder apart. I don't know what kind of printer you have, but most printers can be disassembled. You can take the extrusion nozzle off. Um, you can really just take it apart and kind of clear the, the plastic out of there. Good. Glad you glad you like the stream, Acid. <laughs> I need to look further up and not just answer the most recent questions. But uh, yes, Gianni, I have the Annette printer, and that's the uh, the one with the extruder that you can take apart and take the filament out. But yeah, I've had that problem before too. That happens a lot when you um, are switching between filaments, and there's still a little bit of molten filament inside of the head when you pull it out and then it cools and blocks off the entrance and it's really hard to, to chain or to get the new filament in but I've gotten a lot better about it there's some ways you can kind of be careful not to get the filament to do that stringiness I pull it out really quickly when I change it and it doesn't leave too much behind I actually push it in a little bit and then let it push and extrude a little bit and then I really quickly pull it out so that it just doesn't have enough um, molten plastic to block off the opening. Um, this is not the moving lenses I'm working on right now. This is just um, ASM-1 shell that I, I'm behind on my, my orders. So it's exciting though. I only have you know a couple more to do. So I'm working through them here, just get them out of the way. And then I'm gonna figure out what after that is the best way going forward to make these available to everyone. And I'm thinking it's a kit. Just a kit where you get the shell, you get all the components, and then it's up to you to glue it together and sand and do all the things that need to be done. I think I'd probably still cut the eye holes out for you because that can be kind of difficult without the right power tools. Basically, I'll try to do the things that you know, are, are easy to mess up and would kind of ruin the shell for you, but then give everything in pieces. Because then if I give you the pieces of a shell, you could do different lenses, you could add different, you know, you could do whatever you want with it, really. And then I'm not spending so much time constructing every single shell. Yeah, thank you, Mattias. Mattias just said, careful with your leg while you drill. Uh, I'm pretty, pretty 
aware of where tools are while I use them um, and usually good about not cutting towards myself but I know that with these tools see how the drill is all the way in right now it can't even get down to my leg um, there's just basically no way that could happen um, and that's also why I just hold it up in the in the air Well, Gianni, Gianni just said he was surprised that I wasn't picked for like the YouTube make your own thing. I mean, there, unfortunately I'm not, I'm not a famous YouTuber. I mean, I don't, I, like a famous YouTuber is someone who has a t like over 50,000 subscribers and, or even more and, you know, has a, a following and a little bit of name recognition and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm moving in that direction. I've been moving in that direction the last few months you know, really trying to improve in that way, but um, I've just, before that, I've never been very good about like making YouTube videos and being a YouTuber, basically. And so I'm not like a famous YouTuber, basically. So they don't, you, know, you guys might know my work, but um, they don't. And you know, I'm fine with that. I don't really care about stuff like that, like, like commercial things and you know at one point I remember I wanted to be on face off but then I realized that that like face off was just in its early days very much just like a reality show and it's so focused on the makeup as opposed to the like actual costume and cosplay stuff I know they have the other the new cosplay show that that one looks interesting but I haven't watched it <laughs> <laughs> Um, a, a big reason why I've been doing, uh, I've been kind of moving my, my YouTube channel in that direction though, is I've got some projects coming up that are going to be really cool. I've already posted some work on them, but basically like my glowing suit project, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. I'm still getting work done on that every now and then, but that's kind of like the next step for me. And if it looks like I'm picturing it in my mind, it'll be... It'll be pretty popular, I think. And I will say, I, I hate to sound like that's all I care about, but at the same time, it's like, if you want to make a living as a YouTuber, which is great, because then I get to spend more time making this stuff and working on new projects. Um, if you want to make that living on YouTube, it's really about your amount of subscribers and how often they click on ads and, you know, that kind of stuff is the, the nitty-gritty of YouTube. But it uh, it's... Well, there are a lot of people out there that uh, actually make a living as a YouTube personality. <laughs> it's funny. Spectacular Spider-Man. Spectacular, spectacular Spider-Man. <laughs> I just like the song to that show. Oh, those two holes were kind of off center a little bit, but that's okay because it's back on the shell. Oh yeah, you guys keep uh, mentioning that new, new PS4 Spider-Man game. Uh, I don't know what to think about it. I watched that, that short video. It looked very, as a lot of internet comments have said, it looks very much just like press X to Spider-Man. Like not, not very much actual gameplay, like just kind of finding events in the level and then pressing the button at the right time. Um, and that's kind of been a weakness of Spider-Man games. You need Spider-Man games to be big sandbox, open world, like the, uh, trying to remember which one I really loved the cart the ultimate spider-man game that one was a lot of fun as well as the PS they're the spider-man 2 and spider-man 1 both of those were fun yeah I heard that Cameron a lot of people said it looks like an Arkham game because I mean in the in the trailer spider-man's even talking to I don't even know who he's talking to and that really just struck me I was like that's not spider-man spider-man maybe you know I'm not super familiar with some of the comic you know, some of the way directions the comics go, but as far as I've known it, Spider-Man's never had that sort of like, 
backup sidekick computer whiz character. And that kind of was just like, sounded so much like Arkham games. Um, and that kind of bummed me out about the, the videos. Like, I, there, I feel like there's a certain, um, I don't know, essence of Spider-Man. That, like, he's a teenage kid. He's not Batman. He's not Iron Man. He's a teenage kid who happened to get bit by a spider and the hijinks that ensue therein. And I, I hate it when that's missed. I, I really, that's why I liked the Raimi movies. I thought they did a good job of that and just kept it lighthearted and like it was serious when it needed to be serious, but it was light when it needed to be light. It just seems like Spider-Man these days gets so serious and it's not, that's not who the character is. Oh, that's interesting. Well, when it comes to um, uh, when it comes to voice acting, if the voice actor's a little older, I can understand that because if you have a younger voice actor and you really like like his voice for the continuity, um, you you don't want too young because then they start to sound different as they age, as time prog progresses. Yeah, and it also makes sense. It looks like it's. A continuation of that storyline and he is older hey Jordan there's your shout out shout out for Jordan lop with three P's <laughs> lop Oh, that's too bad. Dalton? Yeah, I know how popular Spider-Man is around the world. He's he's definitely, the, I think, one of the most popular characters in the world. Definitely the most popular superhero, I think. So it's, I, I imagine there are a lot of sad people out there that couldn't contribute. <laughs> Um, answer a couple questions here that I'm missing out. Yeah, these are the holes that I'm drilling here are ventilation holes. And I'm, I'm putting holes in the top of the mask too because, you know, you, you have hot air all throughout the mask and you have a lot of hot air that collects at the top. So you want it to be able to get out. Um, and it doesn't take, I mean, I don't know if you're asking cleanup as in like where all of the scraps like cleaning up all of the mess or cleaning up the holes because the holes are kind of like sharp and and jaggedy but it doesn't take much because i just run some sandpaper over it and it gets rid of all of those little sharp tabs that the drilling leaves and i'm trying out um I'm trying out this new drill pattern typically i have a a template that makes it easier to go along and drill quickly Um, Chris, what's, what's probably happening to your 3D printer with the filament? So you're the second filament question person, so I'll go ahead and address that really fast. So what's, what's probably happening with your printer here is, uh, so you've got your filament that comes in here and you've, you've got this button here that you press down and that takes pressure off of the wheel. There's a metal, a steel wheel in here that moves the filament um, down and up, and that's how it, it knows when to extrude material. And then it goes into a little chamber down into here, and then, um, you know, extrudes out as the, the long line. So it goes in the chamber here and then extrudes out. But there's a little, like, chamber up in here that it goes in to melt initially, and it can get stuck in there. And so what can happen is there will be... Um, liquid plastic that actually solidifies over that hole and that can really mess it up for you. Um, I don't have the right screwdriver right here in front of me, but basically what you have to do is you have to take these bolts off. So you assembled your, you assembled all of this initially, if you got in a net, so you know 
kind of how it all comes together. You can take these fans off and then you can undo this screw right here in the bottom that I'm pointing at right here. And that'll take the whole um, heater assembly off. There'll be some tension on the spring, but it's once you get the hang of it, it's not hard to put it back together. I've had to do that two or three times already. But um, another thing you could do is you could just heat it up and then take like a long toothpick or a piece of wire or something and stick it in there and try to clear the top of the the hole that way. Don't be too aggressive and scratch around and you don't want to get it more stuck. But um, that kind of helps you clear out that hole that that can get sealed by the, the liquid plastic. But yeah, I've, I've had that problem before. So I know from experience that that can happen pretty easily. And then you just have to start being more careful about switching your filaments in the future. You just can't like, I don't like to pull it out slowly at all because if you pull it out, sl the filament out slowly, you're kind of giving it the chance to stretch and, and let that hot liquid plastic uh, leave some residue that will cover the hole and harden. So it's always good to heat it up. I even get it really hot, hotter than the filament needs for printing when I switch them out so that it uh, is sure to be like really nice and hot. <laughs> yeah, just use some wire. Uh, I've used wire before. Um, basically, here, once again, I made a tool. I don't know where it's at. It's probably in here. This is all of my 3D printing stuff. I keep it sealed because if, if printer filament is exposed to moisture in the air, it can actually get more brittle over time. So you wanna keep it sealed. And I also throw, throw these desiccant packages that you get with the, the filament into the, the container so that it sits there and continues to keep it dry. Um, I don't know where it is, but I just have a little, little um, piece of wire with a loop on the end that I use to um, clear out that hole. And another thing I've noticed, when you're putting the filament into the, the top of the extruder, especially with the Annette, if you allow it to clamp into the wheel, so like if you're pressing the button down and you put the filament in, before you get in the hole, you, you let go and it kind of gets clamped into the wheel, and then it's basically pointing directly at the hole at that point. So then you press down again, and then it's just a matter of pushing and it'll kind of go straight down into the hole. Um, I've had a lot of success with that. Um, <laughs> I'm like sweating onto my phone here, so hopefully I don't break it. My garage is a little toasty right now. Yeah, Chris, I've specifically had the problem before where the the whole that whole heater section was just had liquid had solidified liquid plastic just right over the opening and so no matter how how hard i tried i couldn't push it in but one thing to do is you can just heat it up just get it hot like preheat it and then once again just take a stick of wire i think that's the easiest and quickest way and then even what i had mentioned before um how the 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 wheel that you're pressing that button down, when you press that button down, you're moving that metal wheel away. When you stick your metal wire in, let, let up on that button, and then the wheel will grab it and kind of perfectly point it at that opening. And then press down again ever so slightly, and then you're freeing it up to move, and then you can poke down and you're, you're probably getting directly onto the hole. And if you've preheated your printer, then that plastic will be, you know, malleable, and you're more likely to be able to clear it out of the way. And yeah, I've seen the, 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 wait, is it? No, I, am I thinking of the same videos? You said Spoderman, isn't that the, the Batman and Spoderman? I've seen those videos, those are funny. I always appreciate anyway, anyone who can make, you know, their own series of funny online videos and actually have it be a continuing thing. It takes a lot of work to get something like that to happen.
<laughs> That'd be funny. Spider-Man with the powers of the Flash. Pretty interesting. I mean, basically just a superhuman Flash with his, I guess he could crawl on walls really quickly. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, super, super fast heroes. I just watched the most recent X-Men movies, not Logan, but um, the most recent ones like Apocalypse and Days of Future Past. Those are good movies in part thanks to uh, Quicksilver. I love the, the Quicksilver sequences in those movies. I thought Avengers 2, really, and then it, you know, Quicksilver was in Avengers 2, and they, I really just, was a, they missed, they missed the mark, sort of, which wasn't as, nearly as entertaining as it was in the X-Men movies. And then he dies. <laughs> Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen Avengers 2. Almost done with these holes. Then it'll be time for some cleanup. Um, Frickin just asked, he just got here, so he's asked what, what I'm doing. I'm cleaning up face shells. I'm drilling ventilation holes, and then I'll probably be drilling, um, or cutting out some eye holes after that. And this is a, an amazing Spider-Man 1 face shell that I'm cleaning up right now. Thanks for tuning in, and thanks for tuning in to all of you. I appreciate the views. It's just fun to hang out, talk to you guys, answer questions. Because I need to get this work done either way, but it's just fun to kind of be out there. So yeah, I'm kind of just scraping off some of the little tabs that are left over. Um, but ultimately I'll need to sand it just to make it smooth because that's where your mouth and your lips are So you wouldn't want little tabs sticking out that could injure you um, Well basically starting uh, Cinematographer 925 asked where do you start? Um, I mean starting with a face shell is is difficult because you basically have to start with a life cast of your head or a uh, mannequin head that's kind of similar size to your own head um, and from there you you sculpt the shape of the face shell with clay and then you cast it and you make a bust a vacuform bust of that face shell and then you vacuum form it I've got some tutorial videos or a couple streams where I've done some vacuum forming so you do vacuum forming to get this plastic shell on top of that and then um, uh, yeah, all this cleanup and everything. So I've never, I've never really handled it from the, the early levels of, or the the beginning stages of making a face shell. I've always started kind of when you've already vacuum formed a face shell or vacuum forming a face shell. Hey Matt, welcome. Uh, I, I do believe this one is yours, so that's exciting. Um, moving, moving along here, getting, getting these done. Um, so. Without further ado, I'll keep keep going. So to clean off these inner holes I've done here, I just take some heavy grit sandpaper, 80 grit in this case, and I just stick it in there. I just use my fingers as the backing here because it's a concave surface and you wanna get in there and really get any of those little tabs out. I'm just worrying about smoothing it so I don't need to be flat. Yeah, I guess you could do that. I hadn't really thought about that. Um, 
Phantasgasmic suggested that you do that I use a drill bit with a countersink already on it. Um, yeah, I just never really knew that or used that. I've always just used my drill bit kit. And I will be going ahead in a second here and countersinking the front of these to give a nice little bevel around the hole. I don't do that on the inside here just because it's a little little more difficult to get my drill into there to do that. And I have to draw the line somewhere. There's just, it's just too much work. That's why I'm excited to offer a kit because then if you want to drill a hole a certain way, you're more than welcome. Uh, cinematographer, I, no, I'm not really like a, a cosplayer in the sense that like I go out and I wear the suits all the time. I, I'm more of the maker type. I make masks and I mean, most of the stuff I make can be, you know, defined as cosplay. I've, but I'll be honest, I've just never really cared for the name cosplay and all that. I mean, humanity's been making costumes and masks for thousands of years without it being called cosplay, which is called costuming <laughs> cosplay is like a decade or two old at this point I feel like <laughs> yeah Chris I'm down if someone if someone has got a tip I, I'm always happy to hear it because that's one of the advantages of these streams because now I can look into finding a countersink bit um, I think my bit is inside yeah Go grab that. Yep. From when I was working on the MCU shell. Yeah, I'm very excited about the, the possibility of what I can do with the MCU shell. Because uh, one thing, I mean, I'll go ahead and talk about this now since I get a million comments or questions about it. Uh, with the MCU shell, I have a lot of people asking for tutorials and like how it's made and how to do it and it's just like it's 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 hard because you have to have like up to this point of a face shell and I have to teach you all of that in order to even get to how to make a moving lens shell and so really I mean there's only a, a small amount of people that could even get working on one once I teach you how to make it so I need to have some sort of like kit or something so I could teach you how to make it and then some of the more difficult to get components like the lens, lenses and um, the actual shell itself. And then all of the, the shutter components too because I can cut those easily now. Um, I can just get it all, all to you and then you will watch one of my videos and assemble it yourself. Um, so I'm excited for that to be the real possibility going forward. So, just getting my drill press ready here because it's a little bit easier to do this on the drill press and just move the actual shell rather than the drill. Um, yeah, I can talk about the ASM-1 lenses, Jonathan, uh, wherever they are. Yeah, I got these done, um, just like a week ago. I'll tell you how I, I make them, uh, eventually. I, I don't want to be too forward, because it's, it is hard, because it's like, if I tell you, then immediately, I, I mean... It's so fast, the other, the other makers, it's suddenly they'll have a kit and they'll have, be offering the same things I'm offering. And so I, I kind of have to be, wait a little bit before I reveal too much, but here is that uh, nice looking, you can tell the, the gold is very nice, bright. Um, I did look at some, some movie clips and it is a pretty dark sunglass color, but like with the two compared to each other, oh, that's neat. Um, uh, the two compared to each other, uh, this one just looks so much more brilliant and it kind of looks like the 
Uh, I think the original lenses were a uh, uh, like NASA material. If I read an article and it said something about a like a NASA material, like this mesh, and that's why they decided to use it because it looked so cool and you know space age. Uh, and I think the the more brilliant bright gold gets that look, like kind of of like a space space component. Although that doesn't really make sense, a lot of sense for uh, Spider-Man. <laughs> so yeah, that's the uh, ASM-1 lens right there. Uh, what other questions did I miss? Um, yeah, Ace asked for the 3D file. I mean, I would, I would release the 3D files and stuff, but once again, then it just, everyone's making shells with my file, and it just kind of is frustrating when, when you work hard on these things and it just gets dispersed and it's just like you, you, you work hard to, to kind of build an audience and get out there but then if you release it or if you sell it too fast it just whew, disperses and there, it's no longer momentum for you and it's frustrating um, um, yeah Matt just mentioned that the viewership increased yeah it's like 33 concurrent concurrent viewers that's pretty good um i used to usually be around like 12 or 15 viewers at once um i'm sure everyone wants to see about the moving lenses and stuff but we'll get there eventually uh, also i'll say again i apologize if you don't like this format if you find it hard to watch uh and shaky because it is it's low budget and it's just my cell phone strapped to my face um but uh i'm working on my stream to get it very to to bring some polish to it and really kind of make it into a tv show and then it'll be fun to kind of turn it on um it'll be a little easier for me to talk to you guys so that should be happening soon and I'm thinking that when that happens, that'll be around the same time I can release more information on the MCU shell so that it won't be quite, quite so, um, it'll be, it'll be good timing that'll, they'll, it'll come together and make my videos a little more successful, uh, basically is what I'm getting at. And this is just, uh, counter-seeking these holes and, uh, getting that nice little bevel as opposed to that ripped up edge. And I do this because I could sand like I did on the inside, but then you've got a sanded surface that's all scratched up and a little different from the one on the inside. Sometimes I do sand it anyway because it's good to have everything smoothed out. Um, so you can go either way really. Um, but uh, I might eventually release the face shell files and uh, you know, I'm going to be more open probably with my ASM-1 and ASM-2 files since they're older but I just know once those files are out there it's kind of point of no return so that's why I'm being a little uh, hesitant. Yeah, uh, Phantas Phantasgasmic, that's an easy name to say. Um, I, I, we talked about the uh, Spider-Man PS4 footage a little bit earlier in the stream. Uh, my thoughts on it are that it, it kind of misses the Spider-Man mark a little bit, but I mean, that's just the direction they're going with it and the, the world they're setting it in. But uh, my, my ideal Spider-Man isn't like Batman, you know, sneaking around and talking to his assistant over his he headset and you know like that that just doesn't feel like spider-man to me and i mean i can understand why for a video game you kind of need that um to maybe introduce other mechanics and things like that but it didn't really seem like uh true spider-man i don't know but it could be good i'll give it a chance 
Although I probably won't get it because I don't have a PS4. I don't have any of the consoles. I have a PC, which is all you need. Unless you want to play PS4 games. <laughs> Oh, I'm not even looking at what I'm doing here. I need to be conscious of where my camera's pointing. This is an ASM-1 shell that I'm working on right now. Yeah, Matt, we talked about that too. Uh, Matt just mentioned that Spider-Man video games are better when it's just like free roam sandbox. I agree. The uh, the older Spider-Man movie video games, as well as the Ultimate Spider-Man video game, were a lot of fun because you just got to go go around all of New York, um, and that was pretty new. That was around the time of like Grand Theft Auto 3 and Grand Theft Auto 4, when the sandbox game was really kind of taking off, uh, and that's like the best way to experience Spider-Man. All right, so I have all of those holes beveled. Have it sanded on both sides. Great, so now I can do what I need to do here, which is plastic dip Although I have to be sure that I, I'm ready for that and not it's still a little too messy up here. It looks like it should be fine. No worries, I, I end up repeating stuff a lot in these streams um, just because of the nature that I, you know, sometimes I stream for two or three hours. And so, of course, there are going to be people that only come in for 10 or 15 minutes. And we talk about something and then move on. Um, ooh. It's a lot of fun working with a camera strapped right in front of your face. <laughs> and by fun, I mean very, very difficult. Okay, so this is, this is a, like, tin foil little holder I made. And, uh... It's also got a hole in the bottom here so that the tin foil, you know, you can stick your hand in and push the tin foil up if it were to ever get pressed too far down. And this is good because it just keeps the, the spray from coming inside the eye holes, coming in the air holes, and then really coating the inside with a kind of shoddy coat of Plasti Dip. Um, what I might want to do is clean the shell a little bit because if there are any oils from your hands, then that can disrupt that plastic dip coat. So I'll probably just hit it with a paper towel really fast. That'll probably be fine. I don't really know what you mean, Evil B. Um, plastic dip wouldn't really give support. Um, the Plasti Dip, I, I add and include the Plasti Dip because if you have a face shell like this, it's incredibly slippery. You can, you can kind of see that it's such a glossy, smooth material that it's slippery. And you could just sand to get rid of that. If you have a slippery shell, you could just sand away the really glossy surface and make it a little rougher. Um, but one, one thing I offer is Plasti Dip, which then uh, gives it a rubber rubberized coating which um, prevents the mask from slipping around like when you turn your head to the left and right it doesn't slip around on the shell that's good Chris glad you're able to get your printer fixed in the course of this stream uh, what did you use did you just take a bit of wire or something or did you open it up I guess I, I remember you, you mentioned that you had found your hex bit. <laughs> yeah, it's super safe. Just whatever you do, don't hit that power switch. <laughs> no one hit the power switch right now. Um, yeah, uh, Winter Boy, I, I'm actually using Flexi Dip. I'm just calling it Plasti Dip. They're the same thing, it's just Plasti Dip isn't Rust-Oleum. Uh, but Plasti Dip doesn't 
uh, maybe it's different now, but uh, this Flexi Dip comes in more colors. So it's it's basically Plasti Dip. They're the same thing, I think, based on my experience with it. Well, that's pretty good, a full face shell. I had to cut my face shell into thirds in order to print it on my Annette, but that was pretty, still pretty good. I could probably have done it in two pieces. Um, <laughs> good, glad you're back. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Just doing some plasti dip, I guess. Yeah, I've got the outside all cleaned off. And this is a uh, Lorentz ASM1 shell that he's been waiting patiently for. Anyone who orders stuff from me <laughs> has to be patient, that's for sure. I wish, I'm, I'm trying to change that around so it's not so much the case, but that's like the one, one necessary thing is patience. This one's almost empty, so I'm probably, that's why I grabbed this other uh, other can. When I was making my MCU shell, I did Plasti Dip, but I accidentally grabbed a can of red, just a regular can of red spray paint. So if you look at my MCU shell, there's kind of a crackled uh, bit of Plasti Dip on the side where I, I sprayed it over regular spray paint and it kind of reacted weird. Um... Um, no, I wouldn't use Plasti Dip as a primer. Plasti Dip is definitely a, a top coat type of spray, um, and it's not very good at adhering to materials typically compared to other paints. So you're you're actually going to want to you'd want to do like a primer or something on top of it. If you're doing 3D prints, um, yeah, there's the primer, and then also Smooth On has a lot of materials. If you're if you're wanting to strengthen a 3D print, you can do. Uh, uh, Smooth On has a liquid plastic that you, it will uh, kind of self-level over a 3D print and cover up all of the little bumps. And I think that would probably reinforce the strength. Um, I haven't really done a review on the 3D printer, but I did do streams where I built an Annette because I've got two of them. Uh, so I did do some streams where I assembled the second Annette and I talked about it then and kind of all the little, the little things you might have to deal with. Uh, the thing about it, it's, you know, it's a under $200 3D printer, so it's very bare bones. It's the, the most basic type of printer that, um, this, this can might just be totally out, um, but it's just the most bare bones printer. I guess I could look at it while I'm talking about it. Um, it's just the most bare bones printer that you can basically get out there. And so there will be sometimes little issues that you have, like things that don't work right, or it's possible that you'll have like an extruder, like on my first one, the extruder doesn't heat up as fast as the one on, the one on my second one does. And so that's kind of just, I, I have a, certain examples like that, how they are different just right out of the box, but it still is, been so amazing having these two printers and like you see they're sitting here not working on anything but when you do have a project to work on it's awesome having two because then you know if you're looking at 80 hours of printing suddenly it's 40 hours of printing um i also have uh i've never mentioned this but i have a little webcam right here um that i got for about 40 dollars that uh, connects to my my wireless internet and i can while i'm printing something i can just look on my phone and uh, look at the progress or um, uh, if it's stalled or anything like that, which is pretty nice. Catch up comments. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna paint these, paint this, I should say. Yeah, this can is basically just empty. So I'm just kinda getting the last bits to do this initial layer. Nice, beautiful day in Los Angeles. 
as always, I love this place. I'm not very close to like the heart of Los Angeles, so I'm actually more up in Van Nuys, but I still love it. It's always nice. All right, I think that one's basically done. I'm gonna be shaking you as well as the spray paint can, so I'm sorry if <laughs> that makes you sick. Maybe look away. Yeah, this is a brand new can, so I have to shake it for a little bit. So we'll do that. Um, I just noticed a comment uh, to answer questions on shells and sales and stuff. I don't really have any definitive information right now, but in the past I've, I've done it around like between two to three hundred dollars um, just to try to keep it manageable because it is a lot of work for me when it comes to assembling these things days and days and days. So, I mean, I have to keep in mind that that's, I mean, for, it's like a, um, uh, if you're thinking about, um, you know, like a day job, how much time it goes into it. Uh, in the past, I've kind of undershot it, and that's always been one of my problems. Is that I've, I don't, I don't really get adequately compensated for the time that goes into it. But that's why I'm, I'm in looking forward to doing kits because then I'm, I'm vacuum forming the shell and making the lens components, and then you guys can put that, that effort into. Um, the labor and everything. And you're learning too at that point. You'd be learning in a new ability. Getting the uh, fumes coming right up back up into my face and I'm not wearing my respirator. I'll say again, you should always wear a respirator when you're painting. No reason not to, unless you have a phone right in your face. So the first coat is very light. It's not even really turning the shell red. That's how many coats you end up having to put on here. Um, I've actually stopped liking the Plasti Dip a lot uh, for my own shells. It makes it really difficult to take the mask on and off the shell. Um, and it does hold it tight, which is nice while you're wearing it, but it's so hard to like align the mask on the face shell and then take the mask on and off the face shell that, I don't know, I'm just not as much of a fan, but I offered it as a, a component of the shell back at the end, start, start of the sales, and so I, I kind of have to keep doing it. <laughs> of course I know what Szechuan dipping sauce is. That's, that's my character arc. That's all I care about. It's getting Szechuan dipping sauce. Eight seasons, we'll get that, that dipping sauce. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll flexi dip my car pink. I actually wanna put gold vinyl all over my car. Just make it like solid chrome gold, that'd be cool. Someday, like those rich princes in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> uh, the key with Plasti Dip is if you put it all on in one solid layer initially, it's a lot more likely to scrape off and peel off. If you put it on in several light coats, it's more likely to be this solid, well-adhered layer, rubberized coating. Oh, 
I missed that bottom chin. All right, that's actually starting to get there. Probably another two or three coats should do it. Um, undefined, the only time I've 3D printed a face shell was the MCU one, and I did do 100% infill, but that was because I vacuum formed it. And if you're ever gonna be vacuum forming something, uh, you either, it, it has to be 100% infill and then backed up with something hard because the heat and the vacuum of the vacuum forming process will crunch it all in if it has open cavities. Uh, the Asian just asked, which one are you supposed to do for a super screen, accu screen accurate suit, puff paint or screen print? Um, definitely screen printing is going to be the most accurate because that's what they did for the movies. You know, they, movie studios have access to screen printing and things like that on a small scale that, the, you know, the, the costume enthusiast does not. So, you know, screen printing is going to be the most accurate, but it's a lot, a lot of work for the people, you know, I know that the audience here is kind of younger. We're... <laughs> okay, that's great. <laughs> nice, nice, uh... Uh, picture, Luca. <laughs> we'll go ahead and remove that. Uh, man, that's great. Can't even get rid of his icon. That's awesome. Um, but yeah, so screen printing is going to be the most um, accurate. But it's difficult. It's difficult, especially if you're young and you don't have access to like screen printing facilities and things like that, because it's really hard to screen print for just like one costume. Usually if you're screen printing, you have to be ready to make dozens and dozens to recoup your investment. But uh, puff painting is great. It's not as accurate and it's pretty tedious, but it's great because if you're just making one Spider-Man suit, you can sit there and you can do it yourself and you can get the whole thing done and it'll look really good. Um, but then, uh, um, but yeah, so, so I would say, you know, I, that's why I continue to suggest, uh, puff painting for people. <laughs> um, it's, it's accessible. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's something that you can do. You can get bottles of puff paint, you can get a print and you can just go, you can work on it. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, and yeah, Laurent, that was kind of my plan. I'll just do both since everyone's been waiting. Anyway, I can I can kind of get that done. Um, but yeah, so we'll we'll see. Uh, you'll you'll be getting that in a little bit because that's your shell. I think I don't know if you were here when I said that. That's your shell that's being um, plasti dipped. Um. <laughs> Yeah, so thanks for tuning in if you just tuned in. I've been hanging out here working on face shells and we're just talking about different stuff. Yeah, so screen printing is definitely one of the, the best things you can do. Um, but also, I mean, uh, I've known a little while about, uh, for, for a few years now, that there have been people out there that use um, heat press vinyl. I learned about that before I learned about um, kind of the, the processes for screen printing because heat press vinyl is actually kind of halfway between screen printing and puff painting because it's actually a little more accessible than um, screen printing because you can just kind of cut unique shapes and then all you need is a press to put, put, well, to put them onto the fabric and it makes really neat uh, raised details. <laughs> Great. Well, I guess I'm getting that kind of viewer now. <laughs> I've, I guess I've gone a little, a little too high up. I also have noticed a little bit on one of my videos some uh, uh, an annoying kind of grouping of comments all at once that are all kind of asking for tutorials and, and things like that, so... You know, whatever. <laughs> it's kind of inevitable and something I've I've dealt with before, but whatever. That's the internet. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so yeah, now I'm going to go ahead and get working on this next face shell here. So this is what I was talking about with a template. But the problem with this template, I, I really like this whole whole design because there's so it's so open and it's still you know it's strong it still protects your face and keeps the shape and everything but it's so open that it doesn't sound like a face shell while you wear it like the echoey noise of it but there's just so many of those holes that it takes a while to um, to drill it that's why I was sort of testing out with the other one doing fewer mouth holes as opposed to all of the ones that I have on this older template I think that works better. I should probably just go ahead with that. Um, hmm. Hey, Luke. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Yeah, I'm definitely getting more viewers these days, which is pretty exciting. It still is kind of laid back, not not covering a lot of ground that quickly, but uh, it's fun to just kind of hang out and talk. Um, so I need to decide if I want to drill all of these holes. It takes a while. Oh, I don't know. Um, Phantasgasmic, the reason why I don't do larger holes is one problem is that if you do a, too large of a hole, so imagine you have a mask over this curve of this head. If you do a tiny little hole, the mask can cover that hole and still keep the shape of the dome. If you do a bigger hole, like a quarter sized hole, then suddenly the mask is going to pull over where that the lack of the material is. So you'd see a little quarter sized flat circle. So that's kind of the physics that you're, you're going between. So like you said, you could do more bigger holes, but then you're more uh, risking being able to see them through the mask. Um, <laughs> see, this is what I'm dealing with a lot <laughs> right now. <laughs> is uh, a certain class of 12 year olds yeah basically Chris Chris gets it it's like basically what what I'll say is if you want someone to give you something shouting at them and calling them names is not the right way to go about it I mean like manipulation 101 getting what you want from someone else I mean that's not the right way to do it and it's unfortunate because you know I'll I'll tell you guys eventually it's just that I've got my own things to work on and that's a little head I'm not working on that yet but um uh, actually you know what I might cut that out because I need to print another sticker to uh to show those air holes uh choices choices I don't know if I've seen that concept art that you're talking about, Frank, so I don't really know what you're mentioning, but that'd be pretty cool. Um, well, Luke, Luke just said, have you thought about doing a face shell that works with all of your lenses? Um, that's just, uh, the, the thing is, is that for a really refined, good looking look, you have to have like a good slot, like a good impression that the lens can go into. And so if I were to do the ASM-1 lenses on this, you'd see this big opening for the ASM-2 lens. So you wouldn't be able to, 
I mean, there are things you could do, like you could have something that fills this hole and then the ASM-1 lens goes on top of that. But honestly, I think, you know, the lenses are more difficult than the face shell itself. Like the lenses, the lenses are the, 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 the main event. They're what is the most important that they have to be look good and detailed and then the shell is just this piece of plastic that's there holding it up so that's why i think it's you know i'd rather have a shell that goes with every set of lenses so it really supports the lenses makes them look good um and that's the way i do it although i know that Um, Chris, vinyl is plastic. Vinyl is basically uh, the name of soft plastic, so it actually can can be painted a little bit with um, just like regular paints, and then plastic dip actually works well because it's flexible. Uh, you need paint that's flexible on, you know, if you're painting something that's flexible like fabric. Um, and then also, kind of to answer your questions, I mean, Plasti Dip's not going to add rigidity. Plasti Dip is rubber. Like, think of add, if you're spraying a coat of like a rubber glove onto something, it's not going to make it rigid because it itself is rubber. Um, so if you wanted to do that, you'd have to do some other kind of thicker paint. Um, this is my sanding box. This is how I keep. Um, all of the dust and everything from cutting, from uh, getting all over my garage or my house. Cause I built this when I uh, worked at my old apartment. Cause it really just gets insane. The mess you can make when you're making a ton of things and cutting a bunch of stuff. But now I have a garage, which is nice. Pretty hard to find in Los Angeles, which is why I live up in Van Nuys. <laughs> Um, I should probably grab my gloves. <laughs> I like to wear gloves for this stage just in case uh, things slip. All right, give this another coat actually. Um, here's a fun fact with spray paint. The best, uh, there's usually a little black dot on the rim. And uh, that means that the best alignment is with the black dot. So you want the hole to be aligned with the black dot. I actually don't remember what that means, but it's something about spraying it and making it spray a little easier. Yeah, so this is starting to build up pretty well. Probably on only another coat after this will do it. Okay, got another coat on there. Uh, Joshy boy, I've done I've done Batman before. I've got a cowl that I did. Um, Laurent, I might do some sometime down the line. We might eventually do the actual screen printing for the ASM one costume. It's just that it, you know, it 
so we're still working on the, the puff paint one. Still, I, I have to sew that one together first. But I mean, all the stuff is there. It would just be a matter of getting the files transferred over and stuff. All right, well, I <laughs> can't cut yet. That's nice. Have fun, go make another account, Chief. Go spend your time wisely making a bunch of YouTube accounts. <laughs> Trying to time it so that right when I use a tool so that I don't notice and block you. I must be doing something right if I'm getting that kind of attention. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, this is just a cutting bit on the Dremel. It just spins. It kind of looks like a drill bit, but it doesn't. It just has a bunch of sharp edges on it. Um, it can kind of be a pain, and it can kind of be really loud. So I'm just warning you. It might get really loud here. Um, I think the last time I did this, people said it wasn't too loud, but just a warning. You might need to turn your volume down. Just a warning. All right, hold on. Now, now I'm not up to date. There we go. <laughs> yeah, of course, that's, uh, that's not the attention you want, but when you go for the attention you want, you inevitably bring that attention along with it. Is it sounding like that? It's so random. Yeah, okay, so sorry. Sorry about that, guys. It might be loud again. Ugh. So that sucks. <laughs> yeah, I could hear that. The wheels screeching. <laughs> well, that's good. At least I warned you to turn your volume down. So hopefully if, if you needed to do that, you could. Oh, sorry, Luke. Um, Insomniac is Insomniac the PS4 one. Um, I'm assuming. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Um, but no, I haven't. I haven't designed those yet, and I'll be honest, I'm not wild about the shape and the look of them. Um, they look a little too buggy. I honestly just kind of want to do like ASM2 with moving lenses. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, the big eyes, but that could be a its own unique huge technical hurdle but since i've got the the method down and then that would be it might be smart for me to do that before i you know sort of teach everyone how to do it um we'll see yeah that would be pretty cool to just take a t you know this shell that i'm working on now basically just give it moving lenses. But it could be, you know, it's such a different 
size and shape and everything that it might be sort of impossible. There'd be a lot of movement too in the lenses themselves. Um, de Asian, the way, the way most superhero suits hide their zippers these days is called, um, a U-zipper. Yeah, uh, Matthew just said it's a U-zipper, so what it does is it starts underneath the armpits, and then it goes down the side of the torso, underneath the armpits, and then it meet, they meet in the middle, um, on the back, like at the belt, and, uh, it can just be one zipper. A lot of people just use one zipper that goes from one armpit to the other. But basically it just goes under the armpits and then it kind of creates a hatch that you step into. But that is really good because it, uh, it hides the zipper really well. Um, you know what's funny? I think that, you know, a lot of, uh, you look at the, uh, the original Spider-Man costume from Spider-Man 1 and uh, I, I caught um, the Phantom on TV like a year or two ago and I didn't just I actually didn't sit and watch it but I loved the Phantom when I was younger the one with Billy Zane and the cool purple suit that they made for that movie and if you look at it it's actually really similar to uh the ASM one or not the ASM one the the spy the Raimi Spider-Man one suit uh I wonder if it's not like the same company that did it or um or that but if you look at that Phantom suit it has a lot of similarities the pattern looks very similar um it has that U-zip, I think. Plus it just has a cool, cool design all over it. Um, yeah, Matthew, Matthew is right. The ASM2 suit was totally different. It, it came apart at the waist and then zipped up the back. So it, it had a totally different style of uh, enclosure. Um, I like the rest of the PS4 costume, other than, I mean, I just don't like the shape of the lenses. They just look a little too bug-eyed to me, and too, too close together in the middle. I'm just not really a fan of the shape. Yeah, I don't think it's it's hard to argue for that one, Joshy, Joshy boy. Uh, <laughs> um, the ASM2 is definitely, I think, the best costume yet. I really like the Raimi suit, though. I think that the metal webbing of the Raimi suit is part of what just like got me interested in making Spider-Man suits. I mean, it was just so well done and cool because it was like hard to define what it was like just stretchy metal that went all over the suit like it fit really well for spider-man um because it was kind of like armor it kind of you know forgave the spandex a little bit like the spandex can be kind of weird a weird element
No, Joshy boy, your your name's fine. Name yourself whatever you want. Yeah, I'm sure this sounds a little bit better than the squealing of actually cutting the plastic. I, I hate cutting the plastic. I used to I used to live in an apartment when I was making my face shells. It was the worst. I knew I must have been the worst neighbor making all these squealing power tool noise. I try to do it at appropriate times during the day, but sometimes I just had to get shells done. I hope I wasn't that bad of a neighbor, but I'm sure I was. Um, de-Asian, if I start on a face shell and the lenses, it can take me like four or five days of just, you know, a bit of work on each of the components. Um, cause also I have to just kind of squeeze it in when I can. Um, so it can take like four or five solid days of moving between the, the different processes of, you know, the shell is actually one of the easier parts and then the lenses get kind of complex and tricky and then it's just so stressful too it takes a long time to build and then it also can be stressful because if you mess something up then you've wasted all that time i'm i'm uh i'm sanding these little nubs that the magnets sunk into while uh vacuum forming so that when i put the magnets on there they have a flat surface, more of a flat surface to attach to. It's hard to get it totally flat. It also makes the connection stronger because it has less plastic that it has to go through. Uh, Jonathan, yeah, I, I do still put in the nose seal. Uh, I actually just shipped Ivan's shell because it was it was in a pretty ready state and was only missing the um, uh, only missing its lenses, some mesh lenses. So I finished those off and got those shipped out to him. And uh, I didn't put a fog seal in that one because he has the mesh lenses. I hope that's not gonna be an issue in the future for him. Um, but for the standard type of lenses, yeah, it is pretty nice having that, that seal that separates the two chambers. Um, Joshy boy, I don't know if you're asking what, what is Patreon or what my Patreon page is, but basically it's just patreon.com slash McLean. And, uh, that's, it's actually spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. So patreon.com slash McLean and Patreon is just a, it's sort of like a crowdfunding site, except it's not based on projects. It's just kind of like if you have an artist or a, like a YouTube show or a podcast that you like, you can pledge um, a certain amount of money per project or per month. It depends on what the creator has it set at. But usually it's per month. And so it allows you to, like, if you really enjoy 
um, I don't know, PewDiePie, for an example, and you want to support him, like let's say PewDiePie is not the biggest YouTuber out there and making all of his money off of YouTube, um, you can actually support him by donating like a dollar or five dollars or however much you want a month. And, um, you know, that helps, helps out in certain areas where it's hard to like be profitable and make a living out of whatever the, the person is doing. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, Patreon's really cool for that. And usually Patreon, uh, creators have, you know, like r reward tiers and things like that. And I used to do reward tiers, but I haven't, I, I took, took away my reward tiers just cause it wasn't really working. Um, with how, how I was getting so stuck behind on my shells, but I might, uh, bring back those reward, certain reward things. Um, cause it's, it helps for, to have it for, uh, your subscribers. I've also just been very bad about posting on to Patreon. Um, you know, it's just not the first thing I think of. I usually just go straight to Instagram with my posts and then Instagram allows you to post onto Facebook and things like that, which is easier. That's always, I've always struggled with the social media aspect of all of this stuff, like where you post and all that stuff. Um, green, green IA just asked about RPF. Um, yeah, I, I go on the RPF every now and then. Um, it sucks. I went on there recently and, uh, a guy I had sold a face shell to a long time ago, like years ago, that I hadn't even, hadn't even realized had fallen through the cracks. I mean, that's how bad I've always been about my sales is that, um, his, his face shell fell through the cracks and I never got it out to him. And so he, he's getting a newer newer uh, ASM2 face shell, one of these, but um, yeah, so I saw that on one of my more, more recent threads, but that's that's kind of, you know, I've, I've got a little bit of history like that on the RPF, which makes it a little harder. You know, I've just never been the, the best salesperson when it comes to this stuff, and it really... I, I could see how to people it comes off as like scam, like a scammer sort of scenario. I'm, I, I maintain that I'm, I'm no scammer. I've never tried to scam anyone. I'm never going to take people's money intentionally and not give them a product. But it does happen just because of the nature of like, I'm just so bad at it. Um, and that's why I'm trying to kind of re, readjust my strategy. I'm always trying to readjust my strategy, but... Yeah, and I like the RPF. I like the RPF a lot. I really want to get more involved with like the Los Angeles, um, all the other RPFers out here in Los Angeles, because I don't really, I don't know anyone locally. That'd be pretty fun, going to like meetups and stuff. But it's kind of like Patreon. I just don't really think about it. Well, I'm glad you're happy, Matt, because you've certainly waited long enough for this. Everyone has. That's probably why it's exciting to watch. Uh, killer, killer dragon. Um, I, I, I talked about this a little bit in the stream and I've talked about it before, so I'll mention it again. Um, I'm not, uh, I, I do want to do a tutorial for how to do the moving lenses, but I'm just having to be careful that I not give away the secret too early, which is kind of my, my tendency. I kind of just run out and tell everyone how I do it or sell a shell and it kind of slips out. And um, so this time I'm just kind of taking my time. I know that people want it for the movie and I'm sure people will want it for Halloween. That might be a little more realistic. Um, but I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm playing this one close to the chest. This is a, this is probably one of the cooler projects I've ever worked on. So I want to make sure that I have some ownership of it before I go out and teach everyone how to do it.
<laughs> yeah, I want to. Uh, I want to teach you guys because I that's one thing I love about the internet and I love about um, YouTube are the people who are so open and you know they, they come up with something like that and they they immediately come out with videos teaching you how to do it and, and stuff like that. But they also typically have um, more well-established YouTube channels. Um, I only have a couple thousand subscribers. You know, that's not that's not a small achievement. A lot of that's more than a lot of people have. But still, it's it, it it's low compared to a lot of the other famous YouTube makers. And so, I if I release the information too early, I do run the risk of some other slightly more popular YouTube maker coming out and using using my tutorial to kind of take ownership of it themselves. And I, I, I hate how selfish and stuff that sounds, but it's something I have to I have to keep in mind. Because I work too hard on this stuff to have it taken from me. And you know, I apologize if it sounds like I'm whining about that. I had a comment on the, the moving lens uh video that uh uh, one, a guy was like, well, he, he whines all the time about people stealing his stuff, so I could definitely see how it comes off that way, so I apologize. Thanks for bearing with me anyway. <laughs> but, you know, I, I've, uh, it, I've only recently kind of changed my YouTube um, presence, you know, started increasing it with streams, and I've got my website, which I didn't have until February, and so I'm I'm really, I'm making a lot of progress very quickly here, relatively speaking, on the YouTube front. So, you know, as I, as it becomes more, you know, set in stone and clear that it's my, my method, I'll be more open to releasing stuff right away like that. And I'm just really, really making sure to get rid of any sharp edges along the side here. Because the one key about these face shells is they have to be wearable. You know, they have to be durable and not hurt you after wearing it for a certain amount of time. And also you don't want sharp edges showing underneath the mask. So you want to kind of smooth them off for that reason as well. Nice, good job, Chris. Got your printer up and running in the in the time of this stream. Yeah, I'll teach you guys eventually. Just sit tight, be patient. If you need to know now, um, I mean really, you have to do what I did. You have to go out and start working on it because otherwise, you know, it's kind of, it's up to me. It's my call, it's my call when that information goes out. But I know, I know that as far as YouTube success goes, a, uh, a tutorial video on how to make a good set of moving lenses would be really, really popular. So that's why I, I you know, I, I, I salivate thinking about that. Because I mean, to be a to be a really successful YouTuber, you really you can make your your income off of YouTube. And then the cool thing about that is you get to just kind of work on whatever you want. You could. My plan is to kind of just move the channel um, into working on whatever is is popular at the time, whatever people are requesting. And then, you know, just always having something new, uh, as opposed to always working on Spider-Man face shells over and over. <laughs> yeah, Maxter, um, there, are, there are a couple, <laughs> a couple other uh, people who are making moving lenses out there. It's nice, because, you know, I, I, I kind of, it's part of why I didn't immediately do a tutorial once I did that mask last year is I want, you know, I didn't want it to be the only way. Um, I wanted it, other people to experiment and come up with their own ways. And then now 
there are multiple ways to do it, and so it's going to be a best of both worlds once the information gets a little more accessible. Because um, I only think it's fair that the people who put, like, um, Lens Factory HK, they're the ones that are pretty much the, the front runner in the moving lenses um, as far as, like, popularity and all that goes. Um, you know, they, they worked hard on their design. It's a, I think it's a group of people working on it over there. Um, they worked hard, so it, that's just how, like, capitalism and things like that work. If you, if you create something that is in demand, you deserve to be compensated, essentially. Um, and I get a lot of comments on my video about, like, copyright, and people are like, well, you, you can't claim it because it's copyright. And that's true, but one thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is that copyright law is messed up in this country. It's very, very messed up. Um, basically, Disney, Disney, the company that made some of its early fortune off of fairy tales, which were stories that were available to the public, Disney has been pres pressing copyright law for the last century to keep Mickey Mouse their, um, their one and only copyright trademark property. And um, it's messed up because it's copyright law was always designed that if you create something like Spider-Man, you, des you deserve to be compensated for basically like the rest of your life or the rest of your career, but not for all eternity. Because eventually when something becomes popular enough, it becomes part of the popular culture. It becomes a, a, a mainstay. And Spider-Man absolutely has done that. And the, the hard thing is, is that I, I could make my own superhero and be making my own superhero masks, but my superhero would never be able to compete against Spider-Man. Spider-Man is the superhero right now. And so it's like, uh, how, what else could I do if I'm a mask maker, a young mask maker looking to, to pay my bills and eat? Um, it's like, this is all that's popular. And so it's a little unfair that copyright law is in the current state that it's in, um, in my opinion. That's my rant on copyright law. Well, <laughs> killer, I know, I know you want to know the materials and things like that, but that's kind of part of it. I could, I could tell you the ma exact materials you need, but then you'd, you'd have a pretty good idea um, on uh, how the in inside works. And so I just need to wait. I need to wait because cause it, it, it's also tough because, you know, one, one way people will take credit for your idea is they'll take your idea and then they'll change it ever so much. Just change a couple of the details so it looks like they came up with it on their, their own. They came up with it independently. And so they're your competitor. When in reality, they're just using your idea to compete with you, which is so frustrating. Um... And so that's kind of, you know, I, if I were to release the material list, that would be one of those times where someone could use that information to create their own moving lens and then say that they came up with it. And so when I do release the information, it'll be sort of an all at once thing and all like, you know, you'll, you'll know the materials and you also know what you need to do with them. Um, I was a theater major in college. Uh, I did a lot of theater in high school. Um, and I really enjoyed it. I, I suggest theater to anyone who's, you know, interested in this kind of stuff or, you know, it's just a fun way to socialize and you meet, uh, especially in like the technical theater aspects, you meet people who, you know, build things and build sets and costumes and props. Um, so that's a lot of fun. And I learned a lot. I went to SMU for, um, um, BFA in theater and uh, theater studies, basically. I studied a lot of directing and writing and um, did a lot of technical stuff, like working in the scene shop. But I, I do a lot with, like, storytelling. And that's kind of an eventually what I want to do. I want to apply all of these skills that I've got to telling a story, you know, creating my own Spider-Man story or my own, um, you know, kind of property. It's just a little further down the road. I've got some things to learn first. Yeah, that's a good idea. Also, um, 
uh, Chris, Chris mentioned mechanical engineering. Also, um, prototyping, uh, item prototyping. I think it was Adam Savage who mentioned that in one of the tested videos. But if you, if you look into like the prototyping field, I, I've never really looked into it, but like basically ob object prototyping is like this drill. This drill had to be made by someone. Like the actual design of this drill had to be made. It had to be designed on the computer. It had to be milled. It had to be cast. All the components had to be designed to be cast properly. Um, so you can actually learn, you can go to college for learning how to build actual things. And that, that knowledge applies to everything that has to do with, um, you know, like cosplay and stuff like that. And they have all of the the machinery, they have 3D printers, CNC machines, everything. Um, so you learn on just all the machines. So I'd, I'd look into that if you're interested in this kind of stuff, because then you actually have a real job, <laughs> not just building Spider-Man face shells. You can turn your passion into creating objects like this into an actual career. <laughs> yeah, there's a, usually like home ec classes in high school. I took some home ec classes in middle school and high school, and they, they'll teach you how to sew if you've never learned before. Um, so that's a good place to go and learn. Um, Aqua, yeah, I've done a Venom mask. You can you can look on my Instagram page. If you look further down in my photos on my Instagram page, which is just McLean Krieger, um, I have uh, um, uh, a picture of my my Venom costume that I did in college when Spider Man Three came out. I really want to do Venom again now that I knew. Now that I do uh, 3D printing and I know a lot more about casting, um, I really want to tackle the Venom costume again. All right, so I, I might only have a couple minutes left here. My battery's beeping at me here. Um, yeah, I've, I've wanted to kind of do a collection of different face shells, but I still just get stuck on, I get stuck, you know, just kind of on these these more popular shells and then, I don't have a lot of free time to work on other Spider-Man stuff on outside of that. Oh, that was weird. Um, uh, I almost did a Miles Morales costume. I, I I spoke with I can't remember who I was talking with, but we were talking about doing a uh, uh, kind of a custom Miles suit, and that was years ago. Back when I kind of was first getting into puff painting, I was a lot more likely to do. Uh, commission suits back then, but now it's I, I know how much work goes into those and and how difficult it is to stay focused and get it all done in a short amount of time. So I typically don't take those on anymore. But uh, yeah, I've I've thought about doing um, the Miles at least a mask. I might do at least a mask for the Miles Morales suit because that's just a matter of you know different colors and stuff. Uh, Frank, if you want to be an animator. Animation is a lot, a lot less uh, about like what school you should go to. I mean, the the probably the most big name school for animation is CalArts, and I've been to CalArts. Uh, I took a, a theater show that we were working on there, and that was the first time I came out to Southern California and I visited during college, and I l fell in love with it, and so that's why I'm out here now. Um, but CalArts is a good school for animation and basically all things arts, all things arts, and it's really immediately recognizable. So uh, if you can get in there, uh, that's a good school as far as name. But then otherwise, animation is one of those skills that's about the the education. Just find somewhere that's going to get you the education, teach you how to animate. Because then, really with animation, you're best off making your own stuff, proving that you can do it, and then you'll get jobs from that. Um, Um, yeah, Chris, I've always wanted to do the more comic style, um, face shell, like with the bigger eyes. And, you know, sometimes, someday I might get to that. But once again, I've just always, I'm always behind and kind of, uh, you know, I've got a to-do list of Spider-Man shells already. So whenever I think of beginning a new shell or something, it just seems 
you know, cruel to the people who are waiting. And so I'm always behind like that. Um, but hopefully in the future, I'll kind of change everything around and, and get it so that uh, it's not such a... I don't know, time-consuming thing. Um, yeah, pretty much that's what I was gonna say. You just kind of have to measure measure your head. You have to look in a mirror, take a take a uh, a ruler, and put it up against your forehead with it, you know measuring side to side width wise look in a mirror and see you know how wide that is and then in your your printing software like cura just make sure that the width of the shell is a little is is that width plus the the thickness of the shell plus however much inner space you want inside the shell and then make sure that the whole thing is that wide and scaled properly so it's all scaled in unison um you're not only making it wider um but that would be the best way to find a, an accurate measurement. Probably in centimeters would be your best bet. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I've, I've been streaming now for like probably hour, two hours. Uh, I'm not sure. I can only stream for about two and a half hours on my phone before my phone dies because I always charge it all the way up before I start. Um, Um, but yeah, it's, it's cool. I love these streams because, you know, my YouTube presence is definitely growing more and more every day. And these streams are really good because it's, it's, it's watch time, which is one thing that YouTube metrics are based on, which is, you know, if there's 20 people watching for an hour, that's 20 hours of watching that YouTube, uh, kind of calculates it as. So sometimes I can get done with these streams and I've added two days of watch time to my my stream and so it's really neat how quickly and easily and you know it's so much watch time that I'm just able to you know hang out and um, you know just chat with everyone um, I haven't done carnage I've got some cool stuff though you'll see um, I've got you'll there will be some carnage related stuff coming up in the next couple months but you'll see how and it'll be really neat um, Uh, I might do a homemade suit sometime. Um, we'll see. I, I typically s stick with the like more official kind of like higher quality ones because that's better where I, you know, where I shine a little bit better. Um, and uh, CAK, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call myself a math genius. I'm, I'm actually really good at geometry, but I think that's because I have a spatial mind, a very, very spatial mind. And it's kind of what makes me struggle with like communication and answering messages and, you know, predictions on time. It's like I, like all of my mental energy goes into the spatial aspect of my mind, which, um, you know, is what, you know, kind of leads to my skill in this area um, yeah and that's what I like about these streams is that it's so much easier for me to answer questions and talk to you because it, I'm as everyone probably here knows I am awful at answering emails you know it's like the odds of you getting a response to an email that you send to me is just you know you have to kind of nag me a little bit before I actually do it um, so I'm just so bad. I always, I always watch, look at an email when I'm, you know, out of my house or, you know, away from my desk and I think I respond to it, but I don't. And that happens pretty much every single time. I need to get into a better habit of just always immediately responding. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm bad at emails. Um, C A K, no. The foam. So basically, you're saying foam with a resin coating. So that resin coating would have to be so strong that essentially you could take the foam out. So think about if you were to put resin coating on the foam, and then if you could just peel the foam away, because you just really need the sturdy, solid base 
in order to do moving lenses. I mean, I'll get more into it because I can't get too explicit without, you know, I'm not going to just start leaking, seeping little bits of information at a time. But um, yeah, like, like Jonathan just commented, um, if there's any flexibility in the face shell, it's going to be an issue. Because like I've said in the, the video, there's a ton of force that goes into moving the lenses. And so that can kind of translate to stress on the actual shell structure. Um, Warbler might work if it's thick enough and if it's strong enough, like, um, maybe, but I mean, I, ABS, ABS, well, I've only really ever done it with ABS because it's so strong, but ABS is kind of where it's at. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, this is probably going to be the end of the stream here. Wrap it up. If there's any final questions or comments based on what we've talked about. Um, I'll be glad to, to answer that. Um, but yeah, my phone, phone is doing its classic dying act. <laughs>